2021's Ghostbusters Afterlife was reasonably well received. It was a nice enough, sentimental and respectful love letter to the original Ghostbusters movies from 1984 and 1989. It was a smaller film in terms of scope of the story, which suited the more personal story about the Spengler family and the legacy of the late Egon Spengler. It even featured a sweet little reunion of the original cast. Obviously, Harold Ramis' likeness was achieved through CGI. So that film was moderately financially successful due to its relatively middle-of-the-road budget, $75 million against a box office take of $200 million. So a sequel was inevitable. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is fronted once again by this new cast. Paul Rudd as Gary Gruberson, Carrie Coon as Kelly Spengler, Finn Wolfhard as Trevor Spengler, and Mackenzie Grace as Phoebe Spengler. Celeste O'Connor is also back as Lucky, along with Logan Kim as podcast. Kumal Nanjiani joins the cast as Nadim Razmadi. And then we have the original cast members. Bill Murray as Peter Venkman, Dan Aykroyd as Ray Stance, Ernie Hudson as Winston Zedmore, and Annie Potts as Janine Melnitz. This time, Ernie Hudson is given much more to do than the little he was given in the first two films, and it's great to see him take a more senior and authoritative role as a wealthy philanthropist financing and running the Ghostbusters operation. Dan Aykroyd has the most amount of screen time of the original characters, with plenty of exposition to deliver. Bill Murray delivers some great jokes, some great one-liners, despite a relatively short amount of screen time. But the original cast make a welcome and meaningful contribution all the same. Also, there's Emily Allen Lind, who plays a ghost named Melody, and she has a friendship with Phoebe, though the film hints that it might be more than friendship. Because it's 2024, folks. Again, Phoebe is a teenager, because, you know, Hollywood's gonna Hollywood and all that. So anyway, without going into the entire plot of this film, because there's really not much to dive into, Frozen Empire is just dull. It's not the worst film I've ever seen. It just feels low effort and very formulaic. It's a forgettable film. I and mean, as soon as you've watched this, you're not going to be talking about it very much afterwards. It's crammed to the gills with exposition and lacking in sufficient levity to make the film a fun experience. And to that point... What makes it even worse is the fact that the jokes aren't funny. And there are plenty of attempts at humour in this film. But aside from a couple of decent gags, mostly from Bill Murray towards the end, the rest of the jokes just don't work. The film also lacks the charm, the mischievousness, and the fun of the original two films. It doesn't have any real soul. And I really don't like that the film is primarily centred around these teenagers. It just doesn't work for me, especially considering Phoebe is a very unlikable, sullen, broody, moody, irritating character. If you removed her completely from the film, nothing of value would be lost. In fact, her absence would probably make the film stronger as a result. Paul Rudd is a capable leading actor, but he is, once again, playing the same kind of character he always plays. The likeable, slightly awkward everyman with a wacky, sometimes offbeat sense of humour. His story arc in the film is really about trying to find his place in the Spengler family and also trying to assert himself more as a father figure to Phoebe. Essentially, he's playing Scott Lang once again. The film is set in New York this time, so it is in keeping with the first two films. And it feels like they're really trying to recapture that energy, but it just doesn't work. The story is pretty standard fare for this franchise. There's a tear between realities caused by the ghost containment chamber that the Ghostbusters have been using for a very long time. Uh, meantime, there's an ancient orb with some dry and rather boring backstory that relates to the bad guy. And the bad guy wants to freeze the world and he's completely uninteresting because he's just CGI. At least in the previous films, the villains were played by, you know, human actors. Now... The inclusion of the remaining original Ghostbusters cast just about gives the film a degree of validity, even though they are now in their 70s. But it's not enough to rescue the film. So, to recap, the story is unoriginal and tired and lacks excitement. The villain is a hollow CGI threat, mostly confined to the end of the film. The main character of Phoebe is unlikable and her story arc is dreadful. The teenage characters just get in the way and feel out of place in a Ghostbuster story. There's way too many characters in the film. There's way too much long, drawn-out and boring exposition that would put you to sleep. And the film isn't funny. 
So I'm trying to think of a serious positive here. There was one joke that Bill Murray makes towards the end of the film, just before the final climax. He finds a bottle of booze in the Ghostbusters HQ and he says, Courage anyone? And he delivers the line the way only Bill Murray can. And it was the one line of dialogue that made me smile. The one moment that felt like a genuine Peter Venkman Ghostbusters moment. But overall, my final score for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is... Eh, out of five. Anyway, that about does it for this video. Please subscribe for more, hit that like button, take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.